Hi there, hope you're well. In this one, I'm taking a look at the Bench Dogs Mark II Parallel Guides and the Bench Dogs Repeat Stop for the Mark II Rail Square. Now, these two products were supplied for review by Bench Dogs. I haven't been paid to make this video or to say nice things about the products as a Bench Dogs affiliate. You bet I'll earn from qualifying sales, so be sure to use the offer code 10-Minute Workshop at checkout for a 5% discount across the board at Bench Dogs Co. UK. Now, I've talked about parallel guides and rail squares before, both separately and together in a comparison, so I'm not going to go into that much detail about the pros and cons of each of them here in this video, but if you're new to the concept, then take a look at those previous videos. I'll leave links down in the description below. In short, though, these are tracks or accessories that attach to your guide rail to help you get repeatable cuts that are parallel to the edge you're referencing or square to that edge. For example, you might use the parallel guides for ripping a 400mm wide strip from a full sheet of plywood or MDF, and the rail square to cross-cut those strips into 600mm lengths for a cabinet. Now, there's a certain amount of crossover between the two products. You'll probably have one or the other, not likely both. And it has to be said that the repeat stop muddies the water a little further here. So let's take a closer look at that one first. So the repeat stop is a length of extrusion that fits onto the Mark II rail square that gives you the ability to make repeat cuts by sending a stop on that extrusion. It attaches to the rail square using a pair of knurled M6 knobs into the threaded holes on the square. And the fixing holes in the extrusion are slotted to give approximately plus or minus 10 millimeters of adjustment. So you can calibrate the repeat stop to your guide rail as all guide rails vary a little bit. There's a few different ways to calibrate these, to dial them in together. And I like to take a simple approach of having a board of a known size. This is 400 mil, but it could be anything. And I've set the stop on the extrusion to 400 mil. I've butted the freshly trimmed splinter guard with the guardrail up against one edge of the board, and then I can just butt the stop up against the other edge and lock the extrusion down with the knurled knobs. Of course, if you took the repeat stop off the rail square, that would mess up the calibration, so there's an additional stop that you can butt up against the edge of the rail square and lock it in place so that when it's removed or refitted, you know it's going to come back in exactly the same place. The extrusion comes in two parts, a standard length and an additional section to take the maximum width of cut to an impressive 1070 millimeters, 42 inches, I think, or thereabouts. But please do check the specs and the prices in the Bench Dogs website. I'll link everything up down below. Rail squares are very appealing generally as they're small, lightweight, self-contained cutting solutions that really improve the speed and accuracy of the cuts. And I think that adding a repeat stop really takes that up a notch by adding effortless consistency, especially for anyone making these kind of cuts away from a workshop or perhaps in a smaller workshop without the niceties of MFT benches or a permanent cutting station. So onto the parallel guides next. I used the Mark 1 guides previously without any issues at all, but I know a couple of folks who weren't overly happy with the calibration of those as you had to flip the rail over to lock everything down fully. And one of the big revisions of the Mark 2 guides is that you actually use these supplied narrow cut attachments to calibrate the guides to your rail. I'm using the Bench Dogs Mark II guides for Festool, Makita and Triton guard rails, and they're also available for Bosch and Maffel rails. And as well as the narrow cut guides, the set includes the track adapters, the stop blocks, and extrusions. It's worth noting as well that these are also available individually, as well as upgrade bundles for anyone with the Mark I guides, links down below as always. There are two options for the extrusions, a set where it's supplied in three shorter sections or a set with two longer sections. Go for the three-piece set if you want it to fit into the optional sustainer. The extrusions attach to the track adapters with the supplied machine screws from underneath and the track adapters slide into the upward-facing T-slot in the guide rails. I'm fitting the narrow cut attachment to the stop blocks. Note how the cutout in the end locates them accurately. And then I can use the NC marker on the stop blocks to set them to zero on the extrusion scale. With the rail flipped over and the track adapters loosened, the ends of the narrow cut guides can be butted up against the splinter guard edge and the track adapters locked down. 
and thus the parallel guides calibrated to this rail whether you're making narrow or regular cuts. For narrow cuts, set the width of cut on the scales and butt the end of the guides up against the edge of the board and make your cut. Note that there are knurled knobs on each of the narrow cut adapters to keep the rail level with the board you're cutting. No need to balance the rail on bits of scrap and off cuts. For wider cuts you flip the stop around 180 degrees and set the PG marker on the scale for the desired size and make your cuts. Now I've got to say I'm no fan of narrow cut adapters generally and I think there are other ways to make these cuts and still have the rail fully supported but this is a well thought out solution though the adapters are a little too unwieldy I think to leave them attached to the stops when you're making regular cuts and I suspect taking them on and off each time would get pretty old pretty fast so if narrow cuts are something you need to do frequently it may be worth investing in another pair of stop blocks just to leave those narrow cut attachments permanently fixed in place. So that's the whistle stop tour of the Benchdog's Mark II parallel guides and the repeat stop for the Mark II rail square. Uh, which of these options you go for really depends on what your proposed or expected use will be and that's a decision that probably only you can make. Uh, I do hope this video has helped you with that decision though. As I said at the start there are links down below to previous videos where I go into more detail on the pros and cons of each approach if you needed some more additional information and don't forget to check out the channel playlists where similar content is grouped together for your convenience. And as always I'd like to say thanks so much to my channel members if uh, you'd like to be part of the conversation part of the community that helps shape the content of these public facing videos as well as getting access to behind the scenes and exclusive content then come and join us as a 10 minute workshop plus member that's my new independent member platform there are full details at 10minuteworkshop.com or you can sign up directly for free at 10minuteworkshop.plus we'd love to have you on board and taking part but that's it for this one thanks so much for taking a look and i'll see you in the next one take care and that's a decision that only you can make, but I do hope this video has helped you with that. Some additional information, and don't forget to check out the channel playlists where similar content is grouped together with your <sighs> videos where I go into more detail of the pros and cons of each of these approaches if you need some more additional information. And don't forget, to oh, come on, come on. Sign up directly for free at 10minuteworkshop.plus. We'd love to have you on board and taking part. But that's it for this one. Thanks so much for taking a look, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.